My name is John Violet and I'm a radiation oncologist and uh, I shall be talking today about dose symmetry and radiobiology of lutetium PSMA treatments in men with prostate cancer and also introducing a relatively new concept, that of the whole body tumour absorbed dose. As a radiation oncologist I'm particularly interested in how an understanding of uh, dose response relationships can be used to optimise radio radiation therapy in all its uh, various forms. This uh, this uh, uh, graph uh, is taught to us as undergraduates and explains the concept that uh, increasing tumour control uh, is seen with increasing radiation dose but also increasing uh, normal tissue toxicity. In this particular scenario uh, it's important to point out that what we're talking about in terms of toxicity here are late normal tissue toxicity effects. These which may not occur for months or years after treatment and are generally irreversible. Um, of course, uh, the, um, the amount of normal tissue toxicity that one is prepared to accept depends upon the setting in which the radiation is being given. Um, one is very concerned about significant late normal tissue toxicity in patients being treated with curative intent, but in patients that are receiving palliative treatments, where the lifespan may only be measured in a number of months, there is less concern about using radiation that might lead to significant late normal tissue effects. I'll come back to this a little later in the talk. So, in terms of the use of radiation dosimetry, it's a... Uh, uh, interesting to compare how this is used in conventional external beam radiotherapy and how this is used in radionuclide therapy. During my normal day-to-day -day practice as a radiation oncologist, um, I uh, deliver precise doses of radiation to tumour and normal tissues and this is dose symmetry led. Um, I determine uh, before uh, treating patients, the dose that I want to give to the tumour and the dose that I'm prepared to accept in the surrounding tissues. And my decisions are guided by well-established dose response relationships that have developed over many years of clinical practice. If I compare this to radionuclide therapy, uh, there, here I see treatment that is largely empiric. Administration of fixed activities of radionuclide are given regardless of the biodistribution of the isotope that define the core dosimetry in individual patients. Although dosimetry may be uh, performed prospectively to give an idea of doses to normal tissues before treatment using tracer, tracer studies, more commonly it's, a rep it's, um, it's available only following retrospective dosimetry studies in patients undergoing multi-administration regimes um, However, uh, in general, um, routine uh, radiation dose symmetry is not performed um, and this, combined with the complexity of the treatment, means that dose response relationships are not so clearly established in radionuclide therapy uh, and are therefore not available to be used to optimise therapy. There's also uh, significant differences in the radiobiological effects of radiation, whether delivered uh, as external beam radiotherapy or as radionuclide therapy. And this relates to the way the radiation is delivered. The biological effects of radiation are not merely a reflection of dose, they also reflect how it is given. Um, for example, in external beam radiotherapy, there is commonly daily application of very high dose rate radiotherapy, given standard doses of radiation. The radiation is delivered to to tumours in a largely homogeneous pattern uh, and at a constant dose rate. Uh, and this is completely different to radionuclide therapy where treatment is given intermittently, often with weeks between each of the treatments. The radiation is often given at much lower dose, the radiation is delivered at much lower dose rates which vary over time and the radiation delivery is markedly more heterogeneous with some areas within tumour and normal tissue receiving much higher doses and other areas receiving much lower doses. So although the radiobiology, radiobiological effects of external beam radiotherapy are very well understood, extrapolating from these to the radiobiological effects of radionuclide therapy is fraught with hazards, hazards and not clearly understood. And I draw your attention to uh, this uh, call for arms, really, uh, publication in terms of um, uh, effort which is needed to understand the radiobiological effects of radionuclide therapy. And this table here merely summarises the uh, differences, uh, many, many differences between the way the radiation is delivered following uh, radionuclide therapy uh, and explains why you know, um, 
intolerance doses to external beam are probably not applicable at all to those um, uh, following radionuclide therapy. So, unsealed source radiation dosimetry uh, and basically includes two components. First of all, the quantification of activity in tissues over time using serial imaging, either as planar imaging or quantitative spec CT, and then dose convolution techniques to convert this activity into dose. And uh, MERD or voxelated Monte Carlo techniques are available to do this. To date, uh, most radiation dosimetry in the field has used planar imaging uh, because of its uh, widespread availability, uh, I'm sure, uh, and MERD. The problem is that planar imaging and MERD both in, uh, in, in incur inherent and inaccuracies in the radiation dosimetry and perhaps more, even more importantly are very time consuming to apply and perhaps explain the rather limited use of radiation dosimetry and radionuclide therapy um, for which I'm a firm believer that routine application uh, is the only way that dose that is the only way that we're going to establish dose response relationships. So planar imaging uh, in this image, um, uh, with image with uh, pictures from the front and the back, uh, trying to determine the radiation absorbed dose in the kidneys is likely to be affected by the overlying bowel, which, as we know, uh, also expresses PSMA. Uh, assessing radiation dose in salivary tissues is likely to be affected by tumour overlying in front or behind in bone, uh, which is a common site of metastases and prostate cancer. MERD assumes uh, standard man and standard woman. Well, the, the diagrams here are clearly an oversimplification of what happens in real people in terms of uh, their anatomy and its relationship to each other. And finally, the, um, the MERD schema has only a very limited capacity to, to assess dose within tumour, relying, relying upon the spherical module, uh, which is commonly applied to index lesions to give an idea uh, of uh, the uh, uh, radiation dose within the tumours. But what are these index lesions? Are they the hottest lesions? Are they the coldest lesions? Are they the hottest lesion plus the coldest lesion? This is obviously a, a simplification. Voxelized uh, radiation dose symmetry solves many of these problems and divides the body up into a series of voxels rather than a series of uh, body organs. And although there are some simplifications for it, uh, involved in applying these techniques. It does account for heterogeneous uptake uh, of radiation in tumours and normal tissues and in particular relevance to this talk allows for a much more accurate estimate of dose uh, in tumour. So in my institution we've been routinely using voxelized, voxelated uh, dosimetry for a number of years now uh, con conducting, con performing serial quantitative spec CT scan uh, scans following treatment uh, and then using uh, rigid and deformable registration to align these images and then um, using time activity, uh, constructing time activity curves in each voxel using a triple phase exponential clearance model. Uh, then using uh, Monte Carlo derived voxel dose kernels based on the decay of lutetium 177, uh, it is possible to uh, produce uh, uh, DICOM uh, files um, uh, uh, showing dose volume, showing dose volumes, which can then be used to draw volumes of interest on in normal tissues and tumor. So, um, in, more recently, uh, we have began uh, creating a, a volume uh, described as a mean whole body tumor volume, and this uh, volume uh, attempts to estimate the whole body tumor burden. We do this by applying a five grade threshold to the voxel dose. Uh, volumes to include all areas of significant absorbed dose and then subsequently review, manually removing uh, regions of physiological uptake such as salivary tissues and kidneys. But why use this whole body tumour absorbed dose? Well we know that symptoms in survival in cancer, um, although they can be related to specific local issues, largely relate to tumour burden with death resulting when the critical mass of tumour in the body uh, is such that the body uh, uh, proceeds to physiological breakdown. Reducing symptoms in patients uh, with metastatic disease therefore is likely to reflect the ability of a given treatment to effectively reduce the tumour burden. Now we're not necessarily talking about eradicating all tumour in the body. Nobody as far as I'm aware has been cured by receiving lutetium PSMA therapy so treatment is, although highly effective, remains palliative. Index lesion dose symmetry does not 
uh, adequately reflect tumor heterogeneity. Uh, for example, if your two index lesions are the two uh, tumors within your body that show very high PSMA avidity and the other tumors don't, then you, even though your treatment may well eradicate these two tumors, it's unlikely to make the patients live longer. And similarly, a large number of low PSMA avid tumors, uh, again, uh, the treatment is unlikely to eradicate all this disease. So overall, tumor burden reduction, uh, we felt should relate to the overall tumor absorbed dose. So here's just an illustration of the workflow in our voxelated uh, uh, technique, the three uh, uh, quantitative spec CT scans, which are then fused uh, for volume of interest uh, definition. Um, the, uh, de the activity decay within each of these voxels is modeled. And then the end result is, as the image on the right shows, a dose volume map on which regions of interest can be drawn uh, um, with the operator deciding which areas um, uh, he wants to know or she wants to know uh, the dose in. So commonly uh, we would, uh, in lutetian PSMA, draw around the kidneys, the salivary tissues, uh, and uh, areas of non-tumor infiltrated bone. So the study population um, for um, our dosimetry work was uh, 30 patients being treated within, pro within a prospective uh, clinical trial, all patients uh, in order to get onto the study, had to show high PSMA expression on pre-therapeutic Garlian PSMA PET scan and received up to four cycles of therapy with a dose adjusted based upon tumor burden weight and GFR. Dosimetric assessments were made following the first cycle of therapy. Uh, in addition to um, determining um, whole body tumor absorbed dose, we also um, were interested in whole body tumor volume um, determined on the uh, staging gallium PSMA PET scan. And we determined this using a similar thresholding uh, to that used in the uh, determining whole body dosimetry with removal of physiological areas of uptake. The particular uh, uh, point that we were interested in uh, with our study was, was the relationship between um, the screening gallium PSMA PET uh, indices and uh, uh, absorbed dose and tumor response, and also the difference in absorbed dose in patients uh, to the whole body tumor volume that received a significant PSA drop, defined as a more than 50% fall in the PSMA uh, serum PSMA readings. 30 patients were eligible for the study. Uh, all of these patients had a very advanced disease as, uh, and aggressive disease as reflected in the a very short PSA doubling times and had received multiple lines of therapy beforehand. Now looking at the absorbed doses uh, from the tissues, perhaps to me as a radiation oncologist, the most important uh, uh, findings here are that, that uh, although actually the absorbed dose in normal tissues um, per administrative activity was relatively low, uh, the range uh, of differences between individual patients was huge, often an order of magnitude within normal tissues. And this to me just highlights that, you know, fixed activities um, uh, are unlikely to be optimal in terms of uh, minimizing uh, uh, or controlling uh, the dose to normal tissues. Uh, though uh, the modeling suggests, uh, or the dosimetry suggests, that for most patients, multiple cycles of therapy, given that the activities used in the study, are unlikely to exceed uh, conventional normal tissue tolerances. If you compare our dosimetry to the published literature, perhaps the first point to note here is that uh, all the other published uh, data in this area, uh, though uh, uh, it's possible that there are more recent studies, have used MERD as opposed to using a voxelated technique. And most of them used blood sampling to determine marrow absorbed dose. But in general, uh, our doses concur with those seen in other uh, published studies. Our kidney doses are perhaps a little bit lower, suggesting maybe the effects of overlying bowel and the use of uh, 2D imaging. Our doses to salivary tissues, again, somewhat lower than those reported, again, possibly reflecting um, uh, artificially high um, absorbed dose estimates using planar imaging. Looking at the bone marrow doses, our uh, uh, dosimetry suggests much higher doses to the bone marrow than many of the other series, but this wasn't clinically reflected in uh, a high incidence of cytopenias, and we suspect it relates to the method that we used to uh, estimate a marrow absorbed dose, which was to draw uh, regions of interest within the axial skeleton 
almost certainly containing occult disease, which is likely to, likely to have made the dose industry estimate somewhat higher. In terms of tumour absorbed dose, again, there are very wide variability uh, in uh, absorbed dose between uh, in bone and, and within lymph nodes between different patients. Somewhat less variability looking at the mean whole body absorbed dose receiving greater than 5 gray, but again, significant variability between them. Anyway, as I said at the beginning of the talk, I'm a radiation oncologist and my interest is, is how do the radiation dose response relationships, uh, what are they following treatment with lutetium PSMA and how can we use them to optimise treatment? So um, this slide shows that there clearly is a correlation, not a very strong correlation, but certainly a statistically significant correlation between uptake on staging gallium PSMA PET and whole body tumour absorbed dose. Of course, this relationship would be much stronger if we hadn't already set a reasonably high um, cutoff value for eligibility to come onto the study. But this is a tool which we could use. Um, we could use um, uh, to give an idea a priori which patients are likely to receive higher doses to their tumour. In terms of the uh, tumour absorbed dose, these, this, uh, this uh, graph shows that the index lesion dose symmetry, although there is a trend, clearly doesn't relate to biochemical and, uh, response in these patients. And as I said, I, 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 our suspicion was that this was unlikely to be a, a, the case because uh, knowing the dose in a few small areas of tumour, it's difficult to see the, how, how that can reflect the heterogeneity and tumour uptake that is observed uh, on a uh, PET-CT or a SPEC-CT scan. However, looking at whole body tumour dose, which is uh, an attempt to encompass the dose to the global burden of tumour, clearly shows a highly statistically significant relevance. Uh, patients receiving a mean whole body tumour dose of less than 10 gray, uh, virtually none of those patients had a significant PSA fall, whereas those receiving above 10 gray, um, sig a significantly larger number of those patients did have a PSA response, which was reflected in a clinical improvement as well. The associations are perhaps even stronger if uh, one uh, looks at uh, any PSA response and its relation to whole body tumour absorbed dose, as you can see in this graph here. So, in summary, what we know from the effects of radiation for many years of study of the radiation biology of tissues is that uh, absorbed dose in tumour should uh, be reflected in the ability of that dose to eradicate tumour. Um, and what we have shown using our voxelated dosimetry tool is if you look at whole body tumour absorbed dose, but not index lesion dosimetry, biochemical response clearly does relate to uh, whole body tumour absorbed dose. We also see that there's a significant correlation between the pre-therapeutic gallium PSMA PET scan and absorbed dose in tumour. These findings suggest that it should be possible to optimise lutetium PSMA patients in, per in uh, re patients receiving lutetium PSMA therapy based both upon pre-treatment pre imaging and post-therapy dosimetry. The goal, of course, here will be to select patients who are likely to receive a whole body tumour absorbed dose that is greater than 10 gray. Of course, uh, this is, uh, um, this, um, is uh, a treatment strategy that works well in the uh, palliative setting, where concerns maybe about late normal tissue toxicity are not such a concern. So, um, with that, I'd like to say thank you to uh, my uh, collaborators uh, that have worked on this study, um, which was uh, an investigator-initiated study sponsored by the Peter Mac. Uh, myself and uh, Professor Michael Hoffman uh, were the principal investigators on this study, but uh, many members of the nuclear medicine team were involved in this study, uh, as were teams of the Euro-Oncology Unit that are involved in the selection and management of these patients during the treatment.